Our temptations meditations will now look at the temptations that are endured by Jesus' disciples. This first one is Peter, and it's something to think that God oversees the whole process. Luke 22, verses 31 to 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. But he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you, both to prison and to death. And then he said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster shall not crow this day before you will deny me three times that you know me. We know this very well. We know the three denials that Peter makes. And after the third denial, he looks, Jesus looks him in the eye. Peter is shattered. He bursts into tears with bitter shame. He had broken ranks with his savior. He was disloyal when his loyalty was put to the test. I don't know the man, Peter said, even swore that he didn't know the man. This is what Jesus had predicted. This is what Peter had vehemently denied, steadfastly denied, but it came to pass. But there's something more to learn here. Peter did not fall into despair the way Judas did, but he did return as our Lord said he would, as our Lord had prayed that he would. And then after he returns, he strengthens his brethren. And we are among those whom he strengthens after his return. Peter's darkest hour was at the same time a divinely appointed hour, and not a minute of it went beyond the watchful gaze of heaven. So when Jesus looked at Peter, it was not to show his bitter disappointment but Jesus showed his unwavering love. All the while, Jesus must have known because of the horrific and wonderful events that were about to take place, it wouldn't be long before Peter would have his chance to renew his oath of fidelity and return to the side of his master. Jesus prayed for Peter that Peter's faith would not fail. His nerve did fail, his faith was beaten, but his faith returned and his love for Jesus. Bonhoeffer says this, the Bible makes it clear that nothing can happen on earth without the will and permission of God. Satan is also in God's hands. He must, against his will, serve God. It's true that Satan has power but only where God allows it to him. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you that your Spirit is with us and that our Lord Jesus prays for us as well. May our faith not fail, but as often as we stray, return to you and know the love of the prodigal returning to his Father. We pray this in Jesus.